Today, we're talking about electric lawnmowers. Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Gooch, and today we're going outside and we're talking about electric mowers specifically this is the steel rma 510v now i purchased this unit myself um full price deal you can't really find deals on and uh tell you the story is we had a gas powered mower we've had them for years i even have i have i do have a tractor too because i have a pretty large piece of property large enough at least and uh my wife liked to use the, the toro push as a self-propelled mower but she loved to be able to mow at least the front yard maybe the side yard with it and uh, had more issues this past spring getting it to, coming out of hibernation from the winter. And uh, eventually I just got sick of it. And uh, because I had always wanted a steel combi system, I, I did purchase the electric, the battery operated combi system. So trimmer, I also have a, a garden tiller and stuff for it. I'm gonna get more tools for that eventually as well. And I probably will do a video on that as well. Uh, I decided, just, screw it I'm just gonna spend money I'm gonna go out and get it and so here it is this is the RMA 510V now uh, because I already had a battery operated system I already had a battery I did get a second battery uh, with this but I already did have the charger so I have the AL 300 charger now you can buy this as a kit but you really don't get a discount right it's just buying pieces to be honest uh, the battery which is a 36 volt battery this is what it looks like right here this is the AP 300 they do have different capacity batteries um, if you have this battery, the AP300, they say that you'd be able to uh, mow about 2,500 square feet. Uh, that's going to depend on a few things. One, obviously the terrain you're going on, and two, uh, whether or not you're pushing it or using the self-propelled option. Three, how tall and thick the grass is. Um, but I would say on average, it's probably a pretty good bet. Um, we are, were impressed actually at how far, how long the battery lasts. If I was going to do my whole piece of property, I'd have to do probably two to three batteries. Man, maybe two. I might be able to get it done in two. Um, probably three, to be honest with as much ups and downs and stuff I have on my, my lawn. But we don't do the whole property. I do the backyard of the tractor because it's big and open and it's great for that. Front and side yard and the stuff we mow more frequently, we use this now. Now I've had it for several months now, to be honest. Um, so I have pretty good dealings with it to be uh, so this is the 510v this is the self-propelled model it does have a 10 inch rear 8 inch front um can self-propel but to like 0. 0.6 and 2.8 miles per hour i think it's a variable right here on the on the left hand side and we'll get a little bit closer here in a second um it does have a single battery uh that you, it actually pulls at any time it has a spare compartment which i'll show you here in a second and that is not hooked up you actually do have to physically swap the batteries so you can't double the range without swapping right you, it's it, it doesn't have that capability it does have what they call eco mode and there's a switch right underneath the cover here that allows you to turn eco mode on or off eco mode essentially allows it to rev down when it doesn't hit as, much, as thick of grass so when you hit the thicker stuff it revs up when you hit the thinner stuff, it revs down, and it saves energy in doing that. 21-inch um, deck has a 20-inch blade on it. Uh, you can do all of the above in terms of mulching, side shoot, or bagging. It comes with a bag. I'll grab that out here in a second as well. 95% of the stuff about this mower, I love. There is always a downside to anything and every product I think I've ever touched in my entire life. Downside to this guy is, or at least one of them, the levers for the self-propelled as well as for the mower deck, they get a little uncomfortable. You know, um, our Toro was also self-propelled. This was flat bar, so when you pinched it up in here, it was flat against the handle. This is a round bar, a round metal bar, and it, after pushing it for a while, it gets kind of uncomfortable in the hands. I dislike that with a passion. I think it's stupid. I think it's a real easy fix for steel to, to put a flat bar here so it's not as uncomfortable when you're when you're squeezing the handle. Um, that's the biggest downplay I have to it. And if that's the biggest thing, we live with it. It's not a big deal. Um, the adjustment, people, some people love, some people hate. It's a single uh, piece adjustment where you can adjust the height of the entire mower deck at any time. Um, 
you get a little more flex because of that. You know, if you have all four independent wheels, they're definitely stiffer. Uh, but this is very nice and handy. So in all reality, for as light as this unit is compared to like a, a traditional gas powered unit, I think the single handle works just great. But I do know that people, a lot of people, like the four post design. I prefer the one. But if I had a heavier mower, I might actually prefer the other way. Um, so, let me go into it, let me show you the different ins and outs of it, and uh, then we'll finish it up. So first, let's talk about the three mowing modes. Right now, I'm in mulching mode. So everything is uh, uh, sealed up, the, both the, the side as well as the back is all sealed up. Uh, you can see we use this a lot, but there's a handle right here that you can actually remove this piece that goes between the changing the mode from a mulching mode to, to bagging mode. So let's show you first show you the side sh shoot mode. So this spring activated door, all you do is lift the door. You take this guy here and you can see where there's, there's actually a bar down here. You actually just put that on the bar and you close it and now you're in the side shoot mode. And she'll shoot right out the side. So you keep the back end, it's side shoot. That quick and easy. Now back to mulching mode. To go into bagging mode, also very, very easy. Uh, let me get a little bit different orientation here. So you can see, hopefully. All right, sorry about that. So we have the handle here that just, you just squeeze. You can kind of see that there's a, there's a clip in there that you're just squeezing together. Uh, and you pull that out and then, you know, I like to brush that out a little bit, but then we have a bag, a big black bag. It comes in and it just hangs on these two black bars, basically the, the through bar. So you put the little hooks on that and you shut the door. And now we're in bagging mode. So we can go from mulching to bagging, back to mulching real quick and easy. Mulching, you do have to put this little guy back in. Uh, it snaps in and down she goes. And now we're back in mulching mode. Real quick and easy, we mulch 95% of the time, but sometimes we do bag. I've never actually done the side shoot mode on this, but it obviously has it. Controls are also pretty easy. So before I was showing you that we do have the variable throttle. This is what's gonna adjust how fast or slow that you're gonna go. So slower, faster, right? And there's a turtle and a, and a rabbit right here on the sticker. Um, that's gonna be this top one right here, right? It's actually gonna make it go. Now. As long as there's a battery in it, it's always got it, unless you pull the key, and I'll show you the key here in a second, because we'll go to the battery compartment. To start the mower, you can't just grab the handle. It's actually a two-step process. So you have to push this side button in. You push the side button, and then you grab the handle. And as long as you're holding the handle, she'll stay going. Now we have an eco mode. You can hear it kick back down, because we're not really going through anything. But if I let go of that handle for whatever reason, she automatically breaks and stops, right? So that's how you use the mower. There are also adjustability to the handle height, which is also really easy. And then there's also a really good easy cleanup method, which we'll go to at the, at the end. Let's go, uh, let's show you the handle height and then we'll show you what's uh, in the battery compartment. So handle height is actually done right here. There's uh, these black knobs on both sides and you can kind of see right here, there's a pin. There's three different settings. So if I pull this out and turn it 40, uh, basically 90 degrees, I guess, turn, pull this other side out, now I can adjust the handle whatever height I want to go to, if I want the lower one or if I want the higher one, and then release this and go back. So turn it back in line, and then just kind of wiggle the handle a little bit to get it to set back in. The other nice thing about this is that we can actually fold the handle up for storage. Because we don't have any gas or oil in here, I can actually adjust this to, you know, to loosen it back like I was adjusting the handle. Just flip it all the way over. There's also a locking point in here that I can twist and let it lock. And now I can actually lift the whole mower up. The nice thing is, this gives me easy, quick access to clean, right? Now, typically you'd want to pull the battery out or pull the key out so it can't actually turn no matter what, um, even if you accidentally were to engage it. But again, engaging, you'd have to do the two button system, but this allows you to clean this up real good. Now, this is uh, not fully clean from the last time it looks like, but at least the, the bigger chunks are gone. Uh, typically, I just take a nice heavy brush and just brush out uh, every time. You cannot use a hose on this. This is an electric mower. It's battery operated. It's got electronics in it. You cannot use water. You have to just basically pull it out. So, you know, don't go for like uber clean. 
uh, like my parents used to do <laughs> with our Toro, you don't have to do that. Uh, this is, you know, keeping it maintained, right? This isn't bad at all, um, in my opinion, right? Of course, everybody's opinion is different. Um, at the end of the, you know, every time, I, I sometimes I'll get out the scraper and I'll actually scrape it down. Uh, best to use a plastic scraper if you can, because you're not going to want to chip this paint. But that's what the underside of the mower looks like as well. Like I said, 20-inch blade on it. Um, and, of course, it's getting some uh, rock chips and stuff, so that's normal. But, yeah, let's go to the battery compartment. So right on top of the whole unit is the battery compartment. And it's just a kind of a smoke-colored lid. Um, as you can see, I have a single battery in right here now. If I wanted to have a second battery, which I can grab. Like I said, this container up here, while it still clips into place, right, it still clicks into place, it is not connected. This is just a spare battery. It can't do anything unless you actually were to swap the batteries, right? On both of them, there's just a plastic, uh, kind of an orange plastic here. That's the clip, and that'll release the battery, and then you can pull it out. Uh, but this is going to be the only one that actually has the connections. And you just kind of slide it in, then you push it until she clicks. This is your switch for eco mode, on or off. That's going to be the, like I said, the variable speed. It'll tone it down. It'll save you some energy if you're not hitting thick grass. This is the key. Is that is essentially what it is? It's just a fuse. You just pull it out, right? They call it the key. It's literally just the fuse, and so it will not operate without the fuse. So if you uh, are trying to keep people from mowing it, or if you have kids that you know tend to play around with your equipment, just take the key and put it in a safe location, and they can't use it no matter what. There's nothing they can do to use it. Um, so that's the the best way to do it. Rather than taking the batteries, just take the key. Then you don't have to worry about the batteries or anything. Uh, and so that's that. It's not water resistant at all. You're not going to want to be doing this in the rain because it's just like washing this. You don't want to wash it. Um, if it starts raining, put the, put them all away. I mean, a little bit of rain's not going to hurt it, but a lot of rain could do some real damage. So let's head up to the front of my front yard, and that way you can actually see it being used. So I do like to apologize for the really windy day, but it is what it is. And yeah. Also, I do have sandals on. I can't usually condone wearing sandals cutting the grass, but I like sandals, so sue me. All right, so here we are. I uh, basically have it kind of on mid for speed. I can change it as I go to be whatever the comfortable speed is. We're gonna push the button, we're gonna engage it, we're gonna go, and then uh, I'll be right back. I don't know if you can notice very well on the video, but it is substantially quieter than a gas powered mower. Now, the grass that I'm cutting right now is actually fairly thick. You can see I'm cutting it down quite a bit, a good five inches or so. Um, but we're getting a really good clean cut too. And that's the thing. It cuts really good. It's easy to handle. It sounds substantially quieter than a gas powered mower. and. You know, I, I can't fault it. It is a fantastic mower. One other item of note is you do not have to use the self-propelled part of the mower. Right? You can push as well. If you use a self-propelled and let go, you kind of got to give it a second to disengage. Um, so you kind of get the pressure off the wheels and then she'll disengage and then you can go. And so I'll show you real quick what I mean. Um, yeah, I'll show you. Go. 
So I'm going to finish this and then we'll go down and we'll clean it. Let's talk a little bit about um, all the mowing I just did, I guess, before we go clean it. You can probably see behind me that there's a little bit of clumping. And that's because it's been a couple weeks since we mowed, and it was really thick up there. Um, so much so that it actually did bog the mower down twice. Um, not like crazy, like, oh, it started bogging it down, and then it just kind of stopped, right? And then I just basically tilted the mower up there, started up again, let it fling all the wet grass off of it, because it was pretty, it was pretty damp, to be honest. It was really, and that's why it's clumping. If I was to do this, um, I probably would have gotten the bagger out. However, when I started mowing, I probably would have just raised the deck up, but I really wanted to see what would happen, to be honest, because I haven't actually ever done anything with that thick of grass. It probably got six, I mean, it was taller than what I showed you earlier. It was probably six to eight inches, but it was really thick. So I actually turned off eco mode, let it ramp up, and then it did a lot better. Um, it bogged down once, and then it just flung it off, and it started going again. So, um, yeah, if you started getting that, I would turn it off eco mode and let it go. That obviously makes sense, right? But I would just bag it. Rather than try to mulch it, bag it, then you wouldn't have an issue. Um, but I did all my, the whole side of my house and the whole front of my house. Let's go down and see what the damage was. So we're going to tip her up on end real quick. Before I do that, actually, pull the battery out, but if nothing else. So we're at the last one, we're less than 25% battery remaining. Uh, I would argue that I probably did a little over 2,000 square feet. That'd be a good bet, maybe 2,200 or so, but thick grass. So I'll give it that. So as you can see, we just have kind of a, you know, a sticky mess around the outside because it was pretty wet. I mean, typically I don't like to cut grass when it was wet. I did ask my wife not to mow it the last time she was going to do it just because I wanted to do this video. So it's, I'm not joking, it's probably been two weeks because I got put off because it got wet again and I just let it sit and yeah. And of course it's thick grass so it takes forever to dry out now. Um, let me grab my brush quick. So I've been meaning actually to get a better brush and stuff but what I have is just a, literally a, an old toilet br brush that uh, was never used in the toilet. And uh, so yeah, it's it's kind of wearing out but it does work because you just kind of you know grab and just you know work your way around now I can't find my plastic uh, I don't know if my kids touched it or what but if you just take something that's just flat you know something that's non-metallic so you're not going to damage and scratch the deck all up uh, wood plastic it just allows you to get the majority of it real quick and easy and I mean you're not talking about you know cleaning it like the dinner table we just need to get as much of the, the thick stuff off as we can, right? And then I just use the brush to kind of brush it out. And I did find a brush that I want to get for it that's a lot better than this, but this was laying around, and uh, it was used for a sink back here, actually. So yeah, might as well use it. But yeah, I mean, obviously in here, you know, when I get the... I want to get a, a heavier bristled brush, uh, more of a straight bristle brush that's a heavy one. And I, I do want to do a thorough cleaning before the end of the year. Uh, but we still got uh, at least another month probably of cutting grass at least before everything gets put away and gets to start working on getting the snow blowers out. So. Or maybe you guys down south, you don't have to worry about that. Up here we do. <laughs> so I'm not going to go too crazy right now, but you get the gist. And of course, at the end, you want to make sure that you take your battery, put it on the charger, and let it charge it up. Oh yeah, and the, that charger, about 30 minutes, battery goes from empty to charged. So, if you have two, you can almost, almost go continuous. Pretty close. So, as you see it right here, if you were just to buy the mower, you're looking at about $489. If you're looking for the kit, like I have, with the AL300 charger and the AP300 battery, $729. If you want the AP300 
300S or APS battery, which is the it has just more capacity, uh, 779 with one battery in the charger in this. So you can do the math. It's not a cheap mower. There are a lot really good options out there that are less expensive. Um, so depending on the tools and what you're doing and everything, and of course the quality steel is a fantastic system. Um, but like I said, I actually purchased the combi system first. And I added this to it. So it wasn't a $730 mower to me. It was a $490 mower to me. Um, to be honest about it, as honest as I possibly can. Because I'm not being paid by this guy. I didn't. I bought this with my own money. I did not. was not given it. Um, not that that ever really skews my vision on things. But to be honest about it, I would buy this again. And I would buy the entire kit if I didn't already have it. So... I'm lucky in that sense that I kind of got pushed into this because I already had the steel system. Um, I love this mower. My wife does not ever want to go back to a gas mower again, which, kudos. It is so much quieter. It, it just runs better. I don't have to worry about gas or fuel. All I have to worry about is batteries. And if I get the brush and stuff for my combi, I also have something that can be used in snow and cleaning off the driveway, which I have to do manually because I haven't gotten the brush system for my combi yet because it's, it's expensive and I got it, you know, one piece at a time. Steel, you make a fantastic piece of equipment. Be honest about it. So if you have any questions, please comment below, share, subscribe, uh, give this video a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, let me know. You can also head over to techgooch.com to uh, get a hold of me directly. If you want uh, some videos or pictures or something other than what I post on the on the YouTube, definitely head over there and, and uh, ask me. You know, um, thanks for watching. If you have anything else that you want to know about this, anything, let me know. Otherwise, yeah, we'll catch you back here on TechGooch for another future video review. Probably that combi system coming up soon. So. We'll see you soon. See ya.